Hello, second grade. We're going to be starting a unit on the Middle Ages or medieval period, and that's roughly from about 800 to 1300, and we're going to be making a castle. There's nothing that says Middle Ages more than a castle. Castles were very popular at that time. Castles um, were used in very important towns um, it would be where the king and queen lived. Kings and queens might have multiple castles. And it was if you had an invading army, all the important people and the village people would go inside the castle and it would be a fortification. And then you would be able to stage the battle from the castle. The idea being that you'd have a height advantage. Your archers could put arrows down to the people trying to get in. And you could also... Uh, fortify your castle by pulling up the drawbridge so that you would have the door covered so that no one could get in the front door. Um, we're going to make this castle out of a cereal box. You can see here that the inside of the cereal box, um, we turned it around and then used the regular cardboard by coloring it to make a castle. And you can see here that we used old toilet paper rolls to make the towers in the castle. So you can see here how our castle is decorated all the way around. And then in the back, we have a back door escape in case the enemy is coming this way and we wanted to fool them and escape out the back. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna cut the um, cereal box so that we had two pieces we can put together to make the castle. First of all, start with an empty cereal box. You can see that the cereal box here is um, glued together. So we just take it apart. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut these pieces along the edges, and you can see it's where the top of the cereal box folds in. We don't really need that, so I'm gonna cut those edges right there. Now, if you had two cereal boxes, you could probably make a very big castle and use um, paper towel rolls as the towers, but that's a lot of coloring and that's a big castle, so we're gonna make a smaller sized one to fit the proportions of the toilet paper roll for our towers. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this in half so that this half will be the front of the castle and this half will be the back of the castle. So I'm gonna take this first and fold it. Just fold it over. And you can see here, it goes down the middle, and so I know where to cut. Okay, we'll take this and cut along my crease line. It's the same on both sides. You can see here, when I back fold it, which is what I'm gonna have to do, back fold it to get my paper. You can see here, this can be my front door this be my side, I'll back fold. Okay. This will be my other side. You can see here how the castle's starting to take shape. And I can have the inside of the cereal box there and then have the outside for coloring and decorating. Remember, a castle is for warfare and um, it's not really meant to be pretty, although some of them have become very decor decorative, um, but it's mostly um, for fortification to, you know, in warfare to have the best advantage over the enemy. I have to put both of my pieces side by side because then I do double the work with one cutting. Cut a small rectangle up, there you go. Cut 
Okay. Now, you have crenellations all the way down. This can be thrown away. You don't need this here. Okay. Now, since we are going to be lining up our castle with a large piece and then a small piece around it, I like to put the pieces the same back to back. So I remind myself that a door has to go on this one. Then I'll flip this around so that the door is on the reverse one. So I know that I'm gonna have a front door and a back door. Now, on my um, castle that I made, I wanted to have a door that lifted up. Usually your castle would, would have one big door, wooden, but then they'd have a series of metal bars that came down in front of the door, and that actually has a, a special name. That was co called a portcullis, and it would be a metal piece that, again, you could turn a crank and it would come down in the front, and it pretty much looks like, you know, jail, like a jail cell door. This is a little complicated, the drawbridge, if you want to just want to go with a door that you draw on, that's fine. Um, but it's kind of fun and your, you know, parents could help you with the drawbridge door. Um, it's kind of fun to have a castle that has a moving door. Um, you know, it just depends on if you have time to do it and you want to do it. But first of all, I'm doing the portcullis, which is an iron barred door that would come down in front of uh, the regular door. Then I also have some windows. Those are the windows I'm gonna put in my castle. I'm gonna put them on both sides, drawing a line. I'm gonna color this in, my door and my windows, and then this is going to be my door that flips up. Now, for this to flip up over top, it's got to be a little bit bigger. So this is just a thin piece of cardboard. It can be another um, cereal box. I'm just going to measure it here. I want this, do this door to be a little bit bigger, okay? And then I also want a, a place where I can fold it so that you can see right here when it's down. Uh, this is in peaceful times, and then when it's not peaceful times, you can see how it comes up and it covers. But see, it's a little big here. It goes uh, too close to the window. So I'm gonna trim that. I just made a little mark, so it's just a little bit bigger. On my other side, this is my front door with my drawbridge. Then my back door, I'm gonna make it so it opens, like it's an escape door. So I'm gonna draw a door in the back here, okay? Just a small rectangle, and I'm gonna divide it. Oh, I'm gonna make a door frame here. Doors ha and windows have to fit in frames, otherwise you don't get them to fit right. This is a frame. These doors don't have a gate that comes down, so I'm just gonna put some door handles on here maybe big, heavy handles. Now, I'm not gonna cut this just yet. I'm not gonna color this just yet, but I'll show you what's gonna happen. Cut this up the middle, and I cut on the sides at the top like a T. You can see when I fold it over, my door opens. Okay, so we have two types of doors. We have one door that's going to have a covering of the drawbridge, and we have one set of doors that open up. So I think I'm going to put windows on the back. Um, I'm going to mostly use crayon with this. Crayon really works well on this, um, on coloring cereal box cardboard. So I'm going to start with this first. Since my portcullis is metal and it comes down. I'm gonna use metallic crayon here. I happen to have a silver metallic, so I'm gonna color this silver. I'm 
going to trace over it with my Sharpie marker, and then I'm going to color the door brown underneath. Now I have my windows to do, and I think I'm gonna also do them with my Sharpie marker to make them stand out. And then I'll color them in. Okay. Now, it's up to you if you want to make it look like people have lit candles inside your um, castle. It's totally up to you. Okay. Now, pretty much the back door will be the same type of thing. Um, you want to outline your door frame. Okay. Put your hinges on here. Okay. Let me put your handles on here. I like to put hinges on my door. Outline your windows. And color in. I'm gonna make my um, door frame a darker brown. Castles vary in how they're the stones put together, but I'm going to show you a way that um, usually in pictures, brick or stone is drawn. And what you have to do is you have to not stack it up one on top of the other. You have to stagger the seam because you don't want a weak spot in between there. So you don't want all the seams lined up because then water or the enemy could get through. You have to stagger it. So this is how you would do this in a drawing. So I'll start with this one here. I'm gonna start right below the crenellations and I'm going to um, make a line that goes right underneath. If you make a little bit of a mistake or it's not quite perfect, that's fine because maybe your castle got attacked and it was rebuilt there. So you leave a little space. Basically, you're making stripes all the way across, but they're not gonna be stripes. They're gonna end up to be um, stones, square stones that were cut for your castle. Put a separation, a vertical separation, in between by giving the size of what we think the, the blocks would be. We'll try to make them even all the way across. See, so now it looks like stones. Try to make it even all the way across. Okay, now the next row has to be staggered. So you have to make sure that the seam in front comes in the middle of the block. So here I'm gonna start the end here. Then that would be in the middle, so here's where my other one is. So I'm gonna go up here. This is where, it's, so you can see, this line is in the middle of the block, that block, this line's in the middle of that block, okay? So that's a pattern that makes it look like stone.
this thing that I did on my castle. It depends on how much you wanna, you wanna color. This could be fine just as is, but I wanted to color my crenellations so that they would stand out. On this side here, you would color the same thing so that you would have it look like on bricks on both sides. Now, the last thing that you have to do here is you have to work on this door first before you staple the whole thing together because it'll make it much easier. This has to be colored, your drawbridge has to be colored on both sides if you decide to color it because when it's down like this, it looks one way and when it's pulled up, it looks another way. So I'm just gonna take um, a brown color here and I am going to I took my drawbridge and I took something sharp to poke a hole through both of them. Um, I didn't use the scissors, I actually used a nail so that I could make a hole. And I threaded, I threaded some string through the holes. And I didn't cut it, I left two large pieces because it has, the string has to come down when it's flat be knotted on the other underside and it has to be knotted on the other side so that you can pull it when it comes up. I'll show you on my finished one exactly how that works. But let's say we're done coloring everything. I then take my castle, I connect it here. I'm using a stapler. it together. Now you can see I have the basic shape of my castle. On this side I have my open escape door and on this side I have my door with the portcullis. This is my finished castle here, and you can see with the drawbridge, I knotted the string on this side so that it was down. The string would be flat. And then when I wanted the drawbridge to come up, on this side, I have knots. And all I have to do is pull the knots, and my drawbridge will come up when my castle's under attack. Now, if I want to make towers, um, I could easily just have my castle without the towers. But if I want to put towers on, I take four pieces of toilet paper roll and I'm going to put the crenellations on the top, doing what I did before by cutting out notches at the top. mine with black line um, because in medieval castles these would be arrow slits and people would be able to stand on the steps there and shoot arrows down to the enemy and being hidden. I also colored the top of my crenellations. Now to get my towers at the top of my castle each of these sides of the cereal box um, has a little piece here, and I found that if I cut, just snip down on the edge where the fold is, and snip down the edge of the other fold, and then took my toilet paper roll and made a tiny cut on either side, I could then slot this cut into that cut, and this cut into here and they'll fit in. I really don't even have to glue them 
see they're nice and tight and I have my castle. So I hope you will enjoy making your castle out of a cereal box. Um, we'll be doing more um, medieval things at another time. So enjoy your lesson. So goodbye for now.